Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, founder of Herbal 411, and I am doing an unboxing on uh, Farsiga. Oh, I probably shouldn't have unboxed it yet, but that's Farsiga. This is the huge pamphlet of side effects and uh, data. Does anybody really read this stuff? I don't think even doctors read this. It's so dense with information. But if you ever wanted to read the chemistry of this thing and the studies, well, let me just show you. There is a map of small print read and a whole bunch of fancy tables. Okay, who cares? So this is how it looks. This is Farsiga, the Paglifloxin. It falls into a family of medicines called SGLT2 inhibitors. And they, are, they were developed about 20, 15 to 20 years ago for diabetes. Um, but I think a lot of people that a lot of doctors were still uh, hesitant. The endocrinologists would use them, and the data over this amount of time has really been very good. In fact, I did a video, and I'll put the link in the description. Did a video on Ozempic, which is a shot. It's not this family SGL2 inhibitors. It's the GLP1 analogs or agonists. Uh, GLP1 agonists work in a different way, and the GLP1 agonists are great too. They came out about the same time or discovered about the same time when science was really moving forward fast uh, versus just using insulin, which is ungodly expensive now. But the uh, GLP-1, just to speak of them, they lowered uh, hemoglobin A1C, which is great. They also made you lose weight. They also knocked out your appetite, which is fantastic. And they have a benefit for cardioprotective if you have atherosclerotic heart disease. So win, win, win. Now the price is expensive and I can never get anybody uh, approved unless you're truly a diabetic. And a diabetic usually means that you, you have two fasting glucoses that are higher than 126 or one hemoglobin A1C that's greater than 6.5 or a positive oral glucose tolerance test. I used to be able to get the Ozempics covered if you had an elevated insulin level, meaning insulin resistance, which is a precursor for diabetes, but they don't take that anymore. So some insurances don't care. I like the union uh, and another insurance, I don't remember what, but others usually ask for pre-authorization. Just because they say, your doctor has to pre-authorize this does not mean it's gonna come in. I think the pharmacy usually says, yeah, it'll be covered, and then I'm the bad guy because I couldn't get it to covered. So this is though, to talk of the SGLT2 inhibitors, the flozins, this is the Depagal flozin, and it's called Farsiga, comes in a pill form. That's what's cool about the flozins or the SGLT2 inhibitors. They're oral versus the GLP-1 analogs or agonists and they're injectable once a week, but still injectable. Some of them are once a day. This is pretty good because if you don't like shots, although the, the, the GLP-1 shots are a piece of cake, check out my video, I'll put it in the description. This is pill form and it can cause some problems with the poop I hear. That's not one of the biggest side effects. The biggest side effect of this thing is that it can make you pee a lot. So without getting into the physiology of this, it lowers glucose in your, in your bloodstream by making you pee it off. And it does that by affecting the kidney. So you will have a little bit of a diuretic effect, a, a peeing effect. So you take it in the morning and that might seem like a pain in the butt, and it does increase chances for urinary tract infection because there's so much glucose or sugar in the pee. You have to be careful about yeast infection, urinary tract infections. However, if you're a diabetic that has a heart failure issue, this is fantastic because it actually decreases all-cause mortality. I don't like to get into too many details if you don't like reading studies and it takes too much time, but it decreases all-cause mortality when you use it especially if you have heart disease that's related to heart failure. Again, the GLP-1s decrease all-cause mortality if you have heart disease more related to atherosclerosis, meaning uh, narrowing of the coronary arteries. Heart failure is usually from years or decades of high blood pressure, cardiomyopathy, COVID, heart failure with reduced or preserved ejection fraction, doesn't matter. But this does great with that. So if you happen to be a borderline diabetic and you have heart failure, this is the medicine. In fact, I've used this has a corollary to control blood pressure when I would have a very uh, blood pressure drug resistant patient. Because I do think that if your uh, glucose is high constantly in the bloodstream, it acts as a trigger to make cholesterol stickier and to make inflammation come on. 
So you don't want that. And if you can get blood pressure down with blood pressure medicine, it's great. But if you happen to have uh, resistance and you're a diabetic, this might be your action that you want to take part in. So having this approved, if you're a diabetic, got it. If you don't have diabetes, I've seen some cardiologists taking care of heart failure patients get this approved because of its cardioprotective effect. So uh, this is one pill a day. It's 10 milligrams. You take one every day. That's why there's seven pills. And I'll do it now. Uh, 513. You don't want to be doing green tea uh, too late in the day because it can uh, stimulate you. There's caffeine in here a little bit. No, 60 milligrams <clears throat> versus a cup of coffee, though. Mm, that doesn't even compare. Easily coated tablet. Goes down easy. It's easy to take. You don't have to take a shot. You just have to take it, though. As far as whether it causes problems with my poop, I don't know. Now, I just did the wrong thing because it's now 5 p.m. and I took that pill for the first time, though. So I don't know if it'll kick in immediately, but it's going to want to get rid of my excessive amounts of glucose by peeing. And that's why I would do this in the morning. I happen to be on a Prolon diet uh, slash OMAD diet, so I'm not really eating much. And... Um, and I'll be, the reason why, because a patient asked me, I'll be doing my next video on uh, cardiac angiogram, CT angiogram. And unfortunately, yours truly does have some disease. And I'll be talking about that and divulging that later, but um, it's okay. I'm not going to die. Don't need a stent, but got to change my lifestyle. This is the beauty of integrative medicine is that you try lifestyle change. That, that's what all diseases, you must try lifestyle change first. If your disease is severe, it might not work, but you still have to do it. And then you jump straight to prescription medicines and procedures. So don't wait till all the crap takes hold. Get ahead of the game. And if you're looking to change your own life, oh great, exercise, eat properly, get some sleep and meditate or have some spirituality practice. And if you don't do any of that or you're just not feeling it, because you feel fine and you don't want to invest in all that stuff. Okay, I'll see you one of these days. But everybody pays the piper. So um, if your body mass index is too high, if you uh, have a slightly elevated glucose, don't wait till you become a diabetic. Sometimes you can get this stuff uh, approved beforehand. But uh, so this family of SGLT2 inhibitors uh, is just as hard to get approved as the GLP1s. So it might not be feasible, but it's just an option, especially if you don't like shots. And the, the beauty of this one versus the glip ones is the glip ones have a tendency to flare up um, medullary cancer in the thyroid. If you have a history of thyroid cancer or what's called men syndrome, you might not uh, want to take that one. This one though, th this family I mean, not this one in particular, this family is great for renal failure. It's great for diabetics that have kidney failure. It's also great for diabetics that have kidney failure that um, also have a thyroid cancer because it was shown to decrease thyroid cancer incidence. Or at least I think the data said, the data here said somewhere that patients that had thyroid cancer, I think it was also medullary or papillary, had a better result when they were treated with chemotherapy when they used uh, the flozins. So to me, that's a positive, positive. Um, if you have your flows in that you like, uh, then please put it in the comment section down below. If this seemed to help you, uh, or if it doesn't help you and you know somebody, pass it on to them. But it does help the channel for me to produce more of these when you give a thumbs up and you subscribe to the channels or you comment. Uh, but bottom line is uh, try to stay healthy. I do have a conference I'm offering, if you're in Illinois, I don't think I'm gonna be Zooming this, but conference I'm offering July 15th for not only my kick-ass bucket list adventure to Crater Lake in September, but also reestablish our goals. A lot of my patients that had gung-ho changes the, the first of January, they've kind of fizzled off. And it's now the summer solstice, the closest point that the, the axis is moving towards the sun. So theoretically, it's supposed to be the hottest time, but is, um, this mid-year time is also when you want to take accountability and did you maintain your resolutions? Did you gain weight? Did, were you successful, but then you fell off the wagon? I think that we don't want to just wait till New Year's resolution, just like I don't want you to wait till you become a true diabetic or you need a stent or you 
have a uh, uh, hypertensive crisis, get all that stuff taken care of beforehand. Don't wait till the check engine light is on and the engine falls apart. Just listen to the check engine light and get your service done. So uh, sometimes if you go to your regular doctor, the only answer they'll have is just wait till it's bad enough or go ahead and start medicines. And that's where I think uh, we're at fault with the medical community is we don't have enough time in a 15 to maybe 20 minute visit to give lifestyle changes. And uh, my average visit is about an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. Doesn't really help pay the bills here, but I think it's what's necessary. So if you have uh, difficulty with trying to figure out your way, come see me. And I do virtuals from across the world. I have patients in other continents. Uh, you can come see me here in Hoffman Estates or virtually, but either way, I'm of available to you and I can give you service. You just let me know I can help or see one of my friends and I'll put the link to the Arizona Center for Integrative Medicine and you can find a practitioner near you. So hopefully this gives you a couple of good ideas. Thank you for watching up on this point in time and perhaps I'll see you at the next video.